This story, which I wanted to mention, I know it's a bit old, but I just wanted to kind of give my two cents on it. So it looks like LVMH have decided to invest in AOD, Ami Leon Dor. And um, I'm a bit conflicted by it. Again, I'm a fan of the brand from afar. I don't actually own anything from them. So maybe you should take what I have to say with a pinch of salt or completely disregard it. That is okay. But I do feel like this is a little bit short-sighted. And also, if you're a fan of the brand, you should be really, really worried really worried i would say it's kind of the it's agreed by most people that aod is quite overpriced for what it is right it's not really great value for money most streetwear brands or fashion brands aren't really because we don't really need the clothes don't get me wrong but in terms of what they offer and what's available from other brands i just look at you know it's a they probably they'll probably get angry for the comparison but you look at a brand like stussy i would say they make comparable products to what Amelion do in terms of shell jackets, varsity jackets, cardigans, hats, t-shirts, like staples that you would say most men would like in their wardrobe. And the prices are just, you know, out of this world compared to what they do. You know, they've got a varsity jacket here, of course, you know, it's probably made with highest level of materials and whatnot for 1250 They've got a shell jacket here, collaboration with Warwich. Okay, cool. Maybe that adds to the to the markup, but it's 725 like crazy amounts you've got um sweater vests for 275 you've got wallabies for 225 made from snake skin if it's not real snake skin why is it 225 absolutely nutty nutty prices you've got some uh quilted terran pants for 525 like legit viz vim fuck you pay me type of prices right absolutely nutty so to see them linking up with lvmh who are not known for selling stuff for cheap you know, you walk into an LVMH um, owned kind of brand or company or store, the cheapest thing you're going to get from them is a flipping coin purse or a ruler or a pencil sharpener, right? Or, you know, or a get out of here, come back when you got some money, uh, uh, you know, award, something along those kind of lines. So I don't think this is going to serve the people that actually are fans of the brand any it's not gonna it's not gonna be an advantage for the fans or the actual brand who actually stuck with them from the beginning and kind of you know rode the rode the hype train and are still there buying stuff every season because the what's gonna happen most likely with this investment is going to mean that they're going to probably open more stores they're probably going to expand their territories they're probably going to expand their product offerings um they might hire more staff and then obviously going to have more items which will mean they're going to have more hit, more misses because if you keep your collection small and tight um, and you're only speaking to protect to a particular customer base, you can probably hear the park nine times out of 10. But when you start trying to appeal to the general consumer, you know, you can run into some issues there with that regard. But anyway, let's read the article quickly. It says, Amelion Dor just received investment from LVMH. It's a good day for AOD fans all over the world. The label has received investment from LVMH. I don't think it's a good day, mate. I really don't. Um, I, I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. Following its success since the founding in 2014, LVMH Luxury Ventures has taken a minority stake in the brand, which will continue to operate as a normal out of its New York office, but with support from the conglomerate. I'm not a fan of conglomerate. I hate monopolies. I think this is really bad in general. I don't think if you're starting a brand, you should have it in your head that you should IPO or you should get bought out by a big conglomerate because I think having a having the ability to having the ability to even make clothes is amazing right to, to be able to kind of take a bit of fabric and make a garment from it is flipping mind-boggling to be able to sustain yourself having a career making those clothes and having fans that want to buy those clothes and customers that love the stuff that you put out and fanatics and whatnot that's a privilege that's an amazing privilege and i think you know especially if you come from working a regular job just having people buy your clothes that you sell um that you make you know in your sleep um really really easily must be super gratifying so that should be the that should in my opinion be the reward enough the fact that you get to support your family by doing the thing that you love for real the kind of um you know the pot of gold the end of the rainbow in terms of being bought out by a conglomerate i don't think that's really the the move in my opinion i don't think that really does anything to your brand i don't think that really adds to the um you know legendary legacy of the brand that you have like you look at what's happening with supreme and v was it vf corp have they really added anything substantial to what Supreme have been doing nowadays? Maybe the Louis Vuitton collaboration, you can maybe say something. I don't really know if that was the same time that VF Cook bought into them. But still, everything that Supreme has done as a company has been built off the back of just being scrappy, scrappy, I guess, and doing it off their own accord. And whatever else the investment 
you know companies come and do after it doesn't really add anything in terms of like changing the story or adding to the story it doesn't do much in my opinion it continues it says during the past few years ALD has gained a cult following and has become a household name amongst fashion enthusiasts and streetwear fans with collaborations ranging from Clarks, Woolrich and New Balance the label's founder Teddy Santis has also appointed creative director of New Balance made in USA line last year working with the label on plenty of footwear silhouettes and potential collaborations now that last point could be something maybe it could be a thing where because Teddy's now at New Balance USA he might have too much on his plate and he can't dictate, dedicate all his time to ALD so taking on the extra investment from Lux LVMH Luxury Ventures allows him to then kind of hire more people who can maybe help out so he so he can maybe split his time between both things. But the other thing I'd say, L AOD I think is going through a similar sort of thing that Noah's going through, where it feels like they're kind of stagnating. Like no like it doesn't feel like they've come out with anything really fresh or amazing in a while. Um and again, you know, with Noah, Brendan Babijan has taken over at J. Crew, I think. So his attention's been split somewhat. We obviously seen recently a recent example a couple of years ago, uh what's your call it? Uh, Demna uh came out and basically said he stepped away from Vetima and would be concentrating particularly uh, specifically on Balenciaga and his brother ended up taking over um uh, Vetima label. So clearly we've seen at that level when you're kind of churning out resort collections, uh, normal season collections, collaborations, in-store events. Um, you're doing stuff in the Middle East, stuff in the Far East. There's not enough time in a day to be able to juggle all those things at once. You're going to need to kind of delegate some things or get other people in who could just take over the thing that you were doing previously. So maybe that's the reason why they do it. But I, I think also, I think in general, this might be, this is probably a, more, this is probably more advantageous to ALD than it is to LVMH. LVMH get the kudos points of having another sick brand in their kind of roster of brands that they're, you know, hoovering up. But then ALD also get to cash the check and protect themselves in case the brand does go completely like you know does go um the direction of like fucking mighty healthy or something do you know what i mean it's a, it's a good approach i think in that regard but overall the prices are, if the prices are already insane as they are now right if we're saying 525 for some quilted um pants is ridiculous or 495 for a patchwork cardigan is nuts if we're saying that's the case then just imagine what the stuff's going to sell for or retail for once lvmh ventures get their greasy mitts on it just imagine i'm not a fan at all